plunges Romeo's dagger into her heart. What if Juliet didn't die? That should almost be the start of the play. Welcome back to the show. That was a moment from the hit new musical, End Juliet. The show features Broadway favorites Stark Sands and Betsy Wolf as husband and wife, and Stark plays Shakespeare, and Betsy plays Anne Hathaway. They both recently stopped by the onstage studio to chat throwing a pop music party eight times a week over at the Sondheim Theater. Betsy Wolf, Stark Sands, welcome back to On Stage. And congratulations again on all things <laughs> and Juliet. This is the biggest party on Broadway. I'm having fun in the audience. Are you guys having fun on stage? An yeah. indescribable amount of fun. <laughs> yeah. What's it, what's it like every night getting to do this this party on stage? I think I feel like Taylor Swift, like in her concert. Like genuinely, the audience is um, so, so happy to be there. They don't know quite what ride they're in for. Yeah. And I think by the end of the show, they they have been on this journey with us and it genuinely feels like this huge party by the end of the night. You know, when all the songs, you know, come streaming down the line in the show, I can remember exactly where I was when I heard these songs for the first time. Yeah. Is that like the it, same thing for you? Yes, you and, and everybody else yeah. who, who is, was old <laughs> enough to hear the song. So I'm not special, Stark. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We feel it. You hear it. <laughs> and the lovely thing about it is that the song begins, or the first chords of a song begin, and there's a reaction. That's a personal reaction to each person as they go, oh, I know this song. And then they hear it in a different way, yeah. and it changes. And sometimes it's fun, and sometimes it's moving, and, and it's always satisfying. Yeah. What's, what's the song that like gets you going every night? I mean, I love the first song that we get to sing together because it really does kind of set up the tone mm -hmm. of the story. And the first lyrics that we say, the audience laughs, and they realize, oh, we're part of this. Yeah. As opposed to, sometimes when you go see jukebox musicals, you know, it's you're laughing at like, oh, they did that here. This is like, oh, it's gonna be that kind of a night. Yeah. And it's juicy, and it works. You're also a rock star in this, and you're living your boy band dream as well. Yes. Um, what's that experience like for you? It feels like cheating, because I get to be the recipient of these the, the, the love that is aimed at acts like the Backstreet Boys and Justin Timberlake, just because I'm singing those songs on a stage in an audience full of people, um, it sure feels good, though, at the end of those <laughs> numbers because the audience like loses their minds. I don't know. There's not much else I can say. It feels like a, like a uh, pop star simulator, this show. I love it. I love it. Betsy, um, I want to go back a couple years because when... We were in a very dark place with the performing arts here in New York and around the world. I got asked to put together a couple concerts at a hotel in Midtown. Mm -hmm. I called on you. I said, it's going to be a little different. I'm actually <laughs> going to uh, have you sing out a window so it's COVID safe. Mm -hmm. You're going to tie to a rope. Yep. <laughs> You're going to hold on. Yeah, very safe. <laughs> You're going to mm -hmm. sing out a window. And that's kind of what we came up with. And these concerts were pretty successful. On your opening night, you wrote on Instagram, and I was so moved by this post. You wrote, two years ago, I was leaning out of a window, literally being held by one rope, and it was a metaphor of my life, dot, dot, dot. I go on stage every night with the biggest smile in my heart, knowing I get to tell this story in this moment. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's true. I will, never, I will never forget that time. I happened to be six months pregnant, and the world was seemingly kind of ending and being put to a halt. And I thought, oh, wow, I don't know what mm -hmm. is going to be in the next stage of my life. I know mm -hmm. I'm going to be a mom. I don't know what work is going to look like. So I felt like I had these just identities that were just being like almost like everything that I knew, everything that we all knew yeah. was being stripped away. And um, <clears throat> so I remember thinking, well, theater's going to look different mm -hmm. after this time. And what are the stories that we're going to be able to tell. And then what I learned about myself, really, I think in that time, and I think what so many of us learned is, like, what do I actually want to be telling? What is worth the time that we have, which we realized is so precious? Mm -hmm. What is what is a story that is worth telling? And when I read the script for this, I, I, I almost, like, couldn't believe it. I thought, I mean, it just, it so genuinely felt like this had to be my next project. I was so... I was so, so excited that this could be potentially a story that gets to be told and that I could, you know, I, I could be a part of that journey. 
Yeah. Stark, how about for you, you know, this being your big comeback to Broadway after the pandemic? It was a very strange time. I am a young dad. Uh, well, I'm not young, but I have young kids. <laughs> We're young. <laughs> We're we are young. all are we young. Are we young? <laughs> so um, uh, my daughter was born in 2018. So when the pand pandemic happened, she was, you know, only two. My son was f five and I didn't have work anymore. And I chose not to pursue like TV and film stuff because I didn't want to be away from my, my kids and I wanted to bank that time because I trusted and hoped that things would come back. But the cost was that I lost part of my identity, you know, and my kids sort of like didn't really know what I did mm -hmm. because I couldn't do it. And I'm so grateful that we've gotten through that time and that I'm in a show that celebrates life and celebrates, um, you know, choosing your own path and empowerment and that my kids can see it because they've seen it four times and they love it and it makes me feel whole again that I am able to do what I love and not just be a dad which is a huge part of who I am but also be a performer on stage which is the other part. A lot of celebs have been to the show. <laughs> it really is a party. I keep saying that, but it is. Um, Will Ferrell yes. uh, showed up to two support. times. Two times he's well, come. Seen it really? Twice. He's yes. Twice. He two came, times. He came three months ago. He's a super fan. And then he, mm -hmm. we heard he was coming back because he wanted to bring his family. Oh, how sweet! And it's the craziest thing to be backstage after a show, and be able to walk up to somebody like Will Ferrell and be like, "Hey, what's going on? How's it been? <laughs> you know, how, how are things yeah. going?" as if you know each other. Yeah. It's just, it's- I mean, he asked if he could come a third time and I said, that's too much. Yeah. And that's the I way said, it is. <laughs> you're, you're good, pal. Betsy Starr, congratulations on and Juliet. Thank you. Thank you. They're fantastic in the show. And finally, we're ending tonight's show with some sad news from the New York entertainment community. Todd Haynes, the beloved leader of the Roundabout Theater Company, passed away on Wednesday due to complications from osteosarcoma. Haynes was at the helm of the roundabout for more than three decades, and during his tenure, the company produced award-winning shows like Cabaret with Alan Cumming, She Loves Me, Anything Goes, The Humans, and many more. He will be deeply missed by his colleagues, friends, and audiences alike. Todd Haynes was 66 years old. Have a good night.